Hello, I'm going to be talking to you today about my career and how I got here. My name is Hannah Buckingham and I'm a civil engineer for London Underground. I started off my career as an apprentice. Now, when I was in school, I had no idea I was going to end up here and doing what I'm doing now. Um, I actually wanted to be an architect and I, uh, I didn't want to go to university and find out that I wasn't any good at it because I hadn't done it before. So I decided to look for something similar that had apprenticeships and I came across civil engineering, which I hadn't really heard of before um, uh, looking into it. So civil engineers, we deal with everything that is built. So railways, drainage, roadways, buildings, like e everything that is built, we deal with. Um, so there's a really broad range of stuff you can get into. Um, it's not just, you know, typical what you think of when you think of engineers. Um, and the good thing is, as well, um, is that if you decide you want to go into civil engineering, you don't have to pick something straight away. You know, you can try a few different things and see where it takes you. Um, so I applied for an apprenticeship. I only required GCSEs to get my apprenticeship. Um, but there are now degree apprenticeships as well, um, which weren't around really when I started, which was about mm, six years ago, seven years ago now. Um, so my apprenticeship lasted for three years. The first year, um, I was in the apprentice workshop, um, and that I just learned loads of different engineering. So I learned um, electronics, electrical maintenance, um, bench work, which is working with drills and stuff like that. It was great fun. Um, I haven't used an awful lot of it in my career, but it was still very useful um, to sort of get me in the frame of learning a practical skill. So uh, while I was doing that, that was four days a week, while I was doing that I was also going to college one day a week to do a BTEC level three in civil engineering in the built environment. Um, and that all formed part of my NVQ, um, which was, you know, the apprenticeship itself. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was enjoyable. The, the college went on for two years, so then in my second year I was still going to college one day a week, and then uh, the other four days of the week I was going on placements around the business. Um, these placements lasted from three to six months, and I went everywhere and did everything. <laughs> so I started off in track maintenance. Um, I did a couple of track maintenance ones in different depots just to see how things differed around the network. Um, so I went to Rickmansworth, where they've got track maintenance there. I went to Haynock Depot and somewhere else, I think. I did quite a few. Um, and whilst I was there, I also not only did the, the track maintenance, but I also worked with the environmental teams um, to see what they did, so dealing with hazardous waste and stuff like that, and, and uh, protecting trees and things like that, you know, seeing, seeing what they did, uh, dealing with neighbouring properties that were dumping waste onto the railway, which is quite a big problem that we face. Um, then I went into drainage. Um, I don't quite remember the order of these, but yeah, I went, I went into drainage, uh, pumps and drainage, doesn't sound very glamorous, but I wasn't actually getting into the pumps and the drains myself. Um, that was that was other people. Um, I was doing design work with them, so I actually designed a sustainable uh, sustainable drainage system car park in one of the depots, which is quite unfortunate because nobody that I know <laughs> will see it. So I can't say, "Oh, go and have a look at that car park," because they're not allowed in because it's a depot, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I went. Uh, I designed that. I also did some station drainage modelling. So we modelled a burst water pipe outside of a station, and then saw how much water would go in. And then we categorised the stations based upon that, so that the company could see well these are the most at risk from that type of uh, flooding. These are the measures we're going to take to prevent that from happening. Um, so that was really interesting, um, and that was my first chance getting to do design work. Um, I also went into SWIP, Station Works Improvement Program. I don't think that part of the company is around anymore, but they did a lot of uh, sort of changes and projects around the network. So they did uh, a bridge replacement up near Moore Park, I believe. Um, then we did Hammersmith uh, upgrade. So 
the Hammersmith and City line and the Circle line station. Um, we made a bigger new entrance there. Um, so my job, I was shadowing the project engineer. I followed her around, saw what she did and helped out with the paperwork and snagging, which is when you go to site and you uh, pick up on little faults that are different from what was specified in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> so that was quite interesting, getting to see loads of different projects going on. And that thing, I could say to people, well, I had a hand in helping with that. So I could actually get people to go and look at it and say, look, I helped with that. So that's quite fun. Um, and then finally, I did, a, I think, two placements, actually, with the uh, the company, or well, the part of the company that I'm working for now, which is the asset maintenance department. Um, so with them, I did pretty much what I'm doing now. Uh, we go out and we look at bridges, structures, and earth structures, and we inspect them to make sure that they're in good condition. So if you ever see people in orange just standing about looking at things, might be one of me on my team. Um, we go to stations, so I've been to loads of disused stations or disused parts of stations, which gets a little creepy, but it's quite interesting because you see all the old advertisements and stuff like that. We do bridges, uh, as I mentioned before, earth structures, so if you're going on the railway uh, on the train and you see any bits of uh, earth going up or going down from the track, we go and look at those to make sure they're not going to slip um, or cause any damage to the railway. So, yeah, we get out of the office quite a lot. <laughs> and then, as well as doing the actual inspections and taking the pictures and writing the notes, we come back to the office, or at the moment, working from home, um, and we write up the reports to say, this is the state it is in, and this, this is the recommendation that I am making. So you might say, oh, this wall, um, it was uh, a lot of jointing between the brickwork was missing, so we need to go out and repoint it. And then you estimate how much work needs to be done, and then that gets sent out to a team, they go out and do the work for us. And then in another four years, or however long the inspection frequency is, we'll go back out and have a look and say, oh yeah, they did it. <laughs> Sometimes we do get notified when they do stuff, uh, depends how, how big the defect was. Um, and then our reports actually go to an inspection review engineer, who is a chartered engineer, and they check it over to make sure that we haven't missed anything, or you know if they need any more pictures, clarifications, maybe they have a different recommendation because they have more experience um, than us. So they can tell us, no, actually, I think it needs slightly something slightly different. Um, and I have my engineering technician with the Institute of Civil Engineers, so that means I'm recognised by the Institute of Civil Engineers um, as being good at what I do. Um, and that's sort of the, the first rung on the ladder to chartership, which is where I'm heading eventually. Um, at the moment, I'm studying part-time at university as well as working full-time, which has been interesting. <laughs> there have been times when it has been very, very hectic, and uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely tested my time management skills, I can tell you that much. Um, I'm in my fifth year out of six, so next year is my dissertation year, which will be fun. Um, and it's been really interesting, because a lot of the stuff I'm doing at university I've kind of already done at work, or at least I've seen the uh, the groundwork, you know, the building blocks. So the, uh, the lecturer will introduce a, a subject, especially with the earth structures that we're doing, the geotechnics at, at, at university at the moment. A lot of the terms they're introducing I've heard of already, or know already, because I read through assessment reports and stuff like that, so I see this stuff all the time. Um, so that's really, really helpful, because for the other students, it's the first time they're learning it, and it can be a struggle to remember everything. Whereas for me, I've already learnt the terms, so then I just have to learn how they fit into the calculations and stuff like that. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend an apprenticeship if you're unsure where you're going or what you want to do, because you get paid to do it, you get practical experience, and you usually get some kind of uh, what they call it, like qualification at the end of it, certification, that sort of thing, um, which is really useful um, because if you're like me and you're 
semi-academic or not academic at all, it's really handy to have that practical element to back it up. So you might go into the classroom and think, okay, so I'm learning this maths or whatever it is you're learning. How does this fit into what I'm going to do at work? Well, then you go into work and it fits into what you're doing. So it's really good to have that hand in hand because when you go to university or college or whatever, you're, you're studying in the classroom and some of them don't have that practical element. Then when you finished a couple of years later, you go into the workplace, you've kind of forgotten everything. You have to relearn it again. Um, whereas if you're doing it at the same time, they kind of mesh together really nicely and you're using what you've learned so it sticks in your head better. Um, and also, when, when you do an apprenticeship, um, if, if you do get a job with the company afterwards, they already have trained you how they want you to be, so you don't have to meet, well you have to meet the same criteria, but you've already met them because the company that sets the criteria is the one that trained you, so you fit the bill exactly for what they're looking for. And you know people in the company, so you know, you have a foot in the door there. And if you decide actually, I don't want to be doing what I'm doing, if you've already got into the company, there's a much better opportunity for you to then move around within the company, um, try out different things, do secondments, which is where you work within the company but in a different part for a little while, or sometimes a different company for a little while to try it out. And if you're a good fit, sometimes you get the job and you, you move to that company or a different part of the company. So I'd say, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with what you want to do, Maybe look for an apprenticeship that's a little bit more generalised and then go from there, see how it goes. Because at the end of the day, even if you don't uh, end up using, uh, taking that as a career, at least you've got the foundation to use somewhere else. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's everything I've got to say today. Thank you for listening and I hope I was useful.